Good morning, friends. I invite us to begin our worship service with a time of prayer for the people of the Ukraine, for the civilians and the civilian soldiers who are taking up arms, for the soldiers, for the children and the women who are fleeing, the children who may never see their parents again. Let's have a moment or two of silence. Welcome, friends, on this first Sunday in Lent. Welcome if you're joining us on your computer or your phone or you're here in the sanctuary with us. Welcome if you've come into worship this morning with questions and doubts or with firm beliefs. Welcome if you're rejoicing today or you're hurting today, somewhere in your spirit or in your body. Welcome if your experience of God feels like being lost in the wilderness and traveling in circles. Or if you sense God within you as that small, still voice that speaks in the quiet. Or maybe a little of both. Welcome to people of all genders, body shapes and sizes and colors. Welcome to people with mental health challenges and physical challenges and emotional challenges. Please join me. Welcome to Lyndhurst United Church of Christ, where we are faithful to loving and honoring the still speaking God while serving our community and welcoming everyone. So I invite you this morning to take a deep breath, to hold that breath for a moment or two and let it out slowly. And as you take that deep breath, feel God's living and holy presence within you and among us. So take a deep breath. And let us worship God together. The psalmist writes, I realized that my heart was bitter and I was torn up inside. Yet I still belong to you. You hold my hand. Whom have I in heaven but you? My health may fail and my spirit may grow weak. Let us worship and praise the God of heaven and earth. All right. Our scripture reading for this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, the fifth chapter. One day while he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting nearby, for they had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was was with him to heal. Just then, some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a bed, and they were trying to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, They went up onto the roof, and they let him down with his bed, the tiles, in the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said, Friends, friend, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to question, 
Who is this who is speaking blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus perceived their questionings. He answered them. Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or to say, stand up and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the one who was paralyzed, I say to you, stand up and take up your bed and go to your home. Immediately he stood up before them, took what he had been lying on and went to his home, glorifying God. Amazement seized all of them and they glorified God and were filled with awe, saying, we have seen strange things today. This is the good news. Praise to you, Holy God. I'm gonna put here. Why don't I give you the mic? And I'll push the button. Put it where it's at. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, in the reading of scripture, may your word be heard. 
and the meditations of our hearts, may your word be known, and the faithfulness of our lives, may your word be lived. Amen. There are two sides to forgiveness. Receiving and giving. Receiving forgiveness in many ways is harder than giving forgiveness. You may struggle with that feeling of being unworthy of that gift of grace and forgiveness. Forgiveness empowers you to recognize your spiritual pain, enabling you to heal and to move forward in your life. Forgiveness reminds you that you are a beloved child of God. Receiving forgiveness then makes it easier for you to forgive others. In our story for this morning, Jesus offers spiritual forgiveness and physical healing to a paralytic man. Do you have any idea what it's like to sit day after day? knowing that nothing will ever change? Do you have any idea how absolutely depressing and demoralizing it is to lie in the public square on a six by four foot cot day after day, hoping that people will have pity on you and give you just a few coins so that one of your friends can go out and buy some food for you? No, I'm sure no one here tonight or this morning has the faintest idea of what that is like. And I hope you thank God every day that you don't know what it's like. It wasn't always this way. As a kid, I could run and jump and play. I remember I thought there was nothing that I could not do. I had all the hopes and dreams that you had as a young boy or a Young girl, my mind was full of great ideas and my body had the strength and the stamina to do whatever I wanted to do. That all changed one day on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, which is where our home, Capernaum, was located. It was a favorite spot for my friends and myself, and we would spend countless hours all summer long. It was all about a dare. I had the reputation of never turning down a dare. No one would ever say, could ever say that I was afraid. No, not me. A tree near the water had this big limb, and one of my friends invited me to go to the end of that limb and jump off into the water. Dive right off that limb, my friend said. I dare you. Well, why not, I thought. What could it hurt? In that instant, my whole life changed. When I did not come back out of the water, my friends jumped in and pulled me to shore. I had nearly drowned. In the days ahead, I wish I had drowned. I had no feelings in my arms or my legs. I couldn't move. I couldn't do anything for myself. I couldn't walk. I couldn't stand, I couldn't even feed myself. As the days went on, I recovered a little bit of the movement in my arms, but nothing changed in my legs. I thought maybe with the passage of time, I would regain the use of my legs, but I did not. For months, my parents took care of me. My friends came by often. They felt terrible about what had happened. And they felt helpless to do anything to help me. As the years went by, one good thing remained, and that was my friends. They came by nearly every day. They never abandoned me. They never forgot about me. They never quit caring for me. Believe me, every day I thanked God that I had friends like that. Most days, my father would take me out to the public square where I would beg for money. It was humiliating, but it was the only way that I could bring money into the family. At night, a couple of my friends would help me back home. 
I always had been a strong young man, and my pride hated that now people had to help me. I remember the first time that my friends told me about a new teacher in the area. They said they had heard this Jesus speak, said he had a remarkable way of interpreting the scriptures. He seemed to have insights that no one had ever heard before. Begging like I did in the public square exposed me to all sorts of people. Anyone who thought they had anything to say would come to the public square and they would hold court. Some were worth listening to, but most were just full of hot air. I suppose you could say I had grown a little skeptical, maybe even a little cynical. Some people who came into the square stayed far away from me. I imagine they were probably thinking, what could he contribute to the conversation? You learn a lot about people when you're disabled. You learn who your friends really are. People look at you with pity in their eyes, and maybe they even drop a couple of coins into your cup, and then they walk away. I'm not sure what they're afraid of. Maybe they felt that something like this could happen to them. Maybe they just didn't know what to say at all. Mostly, I think, they're just glad it's not them, and they quickly walk away. Well, my friends were continually talking about this Jesus that they had been following, and they were absolutely convinced that this carpenter from Nazareth was the Messiah who was to come. Now, come on, I asked them, did you really believe that? Did you really think that the Messiah was going to come as a carpenter from Nazareth? Now, nothing against the people who live in Nazareth. That's a town not too far away. I get that. But I didn't think that we'd be looking for the Messiah to come as a carpenter or to come from that little town. They kept telling me how they had seen Jesus heal people, even people who had been blind and deaf from birth. And they said, if he can do that for them, maybe he can help you. But I'd been to a lot of doctors, and I'd heard what they had to say. There was nothing they could do to help me. There was nothing to be done. I had to learn to live with my disability. And I did learn. I didn't like it, but I learned how to live with it. Still, my friends would not let up. No matter how much I told them that I didn't need help, that I wasn't going to get excited about something that was not going to happen to me, they would not quit. You've just got to hear it. You just need to meet him, they said. Yeah, yeah, someday, I said. Well, that someday came about a month later. Jesus was visiting a friend of his in Capernaum, and my friends were absolutely insistent that we were going. And they picked up my cot, and they carried me. They took me to the house, but by the time we got there, there were so many people in front of the house, straining just to see over one another. There was no way we could get anywhere close to the door. So I thought, that's it, we're done but not my friends. Do any of you have some crazy friends who will do anything for you or maybe just crazy friends? I see some nodding of heads, yes. Before I knew it, my friends had run up the staircase on the side of the house and they had gotten up on the roof and they began removing some of the branches and leaves and the tiles on that roof. The stairway on the side of our homes was a lot like homes in the rest of the town that allowed the owner to make repairs to the roof, which was something that people in this dry, sometimes wet climate and the kind of roofs we had, people had to make repairs fairly often. So once my friends got the roof off, they came back down 
They tied ropes to the four corners of my cots. They carried me up to that roof by my poles. And then they let me down through the roof until I was right there just in front of Jesus. And I was sure that I was going to fall off that cot. But I didn't. I found myself lying on the ground, looking up at Jesus. As you can imagine, everyone was watching what we were doing. And I was embarrassed. I didn't know what to say. But it didn't matter. Jesus spoke first. Your sins are forgiven. As soon as Jesus said, your sins are forgiven, people started getting a little nervous. You could hear the whispers all around the room and even from the people outside. Who does he think he is? Only God can forgive sins. Is he claiming to be God? Jesus smiled at the muttering crowd and said, which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or get up, take up your mat, and go home. But so you know that I have the authority to forgive sins. And then Jesus turned, and he looked at me, and his eyes were sparkling, and he had a big grin on his face, and he said, Get up, take up your mat, and go home. Who was he kidding? Did he expect me to just stand up and walk out of there? How many years of not having any feeling in my legs did I really think that I could do what he said? Could I just stand up and walk? I looked at him, and I knew that is exactly what he thought. It was when I started to prop myself up on my elbows that I began to feel something in my legs. I looked up at him, and I knew that he knew what I was feeling. I pushed myself up onto my knees, and you could hear the people around me gasp. They knew me. They knew what had happened to me. They knew I couldn't feel anything in my legs until this moment. So I reached up and Jesus took my hand and he helped me to my feet. I was standing and I was standing on legs that only a moment before didn't feel anything. And I kind of moved from side to side, kind of rocking a little bit, testing each leg to see if it was real. And it was real. It was real. One of my friends handed me my cot, and I walked out of that house without any help, carrying my cot just like he said. I was totally speechless, but you should have heard my friends. They were laughing and slapping me on the back, saying, see, we told you. We knew he could do it. For the next several days, I couldn't wait to get out of bed, to be sure it was real and not just a dream. But it was no dream. I could walk. And in the days to come, I could run and I could jump. I could do anything that anyone else could do. I was completely healed. But something even more important happened. Jesus told me my sins were forgiven. Everyone else could only talk about the healing, but I knew that something even bigger was happening inside of me. My heart had changed. God was no longer a distant concept. Now God was real, and that reality came with a relationship with Jesus. You know the story of Jesus. You know he would go to the cross, die and rise again, that we might be forgiven. Well, you might say that I had a preview of that forgiveness right there on the floor of that house. Yes, my life was changed, and walking was only a small part of that change. 
A bigger change happened in my heart. How many times in your life have you had to rely on the faith of your friends? Have you had times when it's been really hard to have faith, to hold on to your faith, but you were encouraged by the faith of others? What does this story tell you about what it means to be a faith community? So that's a question I'm asking you looking for some responses. What does the story tell you about what it means to be a faith community? We help one another. That's an important part of this story. Never give up. Never give up. Strength in numbers. Strength in numbers, absolutely. Step outside of your comfort zone and try. Step outside of your comfort zone and try. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to turn to God and ask for help. Because we don't do it alone. That's what being part of a faith community is all about. We don't worship alone. We don't do ministry alone. We don't care for our neighbors alone. We don't grow in our faith alone. We do it together. Think about what this story tells you about forgiveness. Amen. I Come With Joy is our communion hymn for this morning. I hope you joy, a child of God, forgive me, love and free. The Lord of Jesus, do you recall? Love lay down for me. Love lay down for me. So it is the first Sunday of the month. So let me ask, who has a birthday in the month of March? Your great-granddaughter will be two. What's her name? Gemma. Gemma. Okay. Sharon? Kelly and Sharon? Debbie? Uh, Sorry, just the name of today. Wonderful. Regina? That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. My son Ernest and my son Thomas both have birthdays in the month of March as well. Yes, Danny? Oh. 23rd, Beverly, okay. All right, any other birthdays in March? 
sister. Your sister, Kristen. Okay. Yes. Jaden has a birthday. Jaden has a birthday? Yes, Debbie? All right. All right, and anniversaries in March. How many years, Chuck? <laughs> it's been a few. 59 years. Congratulations. Excellent. <laughs> I will. Any other anniversaries that we know of in March? Yeah, it was the only one I thought. Okay, let's sing happy birthday to our friends. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friends. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> All right, prayers, concerns, and joys. We'll start with Beverly. Beverly got admitted back to the hospital. She got dehydrated and she got, was very confused, so they had to send her back to the hospital. Her daughter-in-law was hoping she'd be there for a couple of days and she'd be home again, but please keep her in your prayers for strength and healing. We'll continue to pray for Ron. He's doing better. His stitches come out tomorrow, but... He's not at his 100% best yet, so we'll keep Ron in our prayers. If we would keep Kirby's sister Terry in our prayers as well, and Janice, we'll keep them all in our prayers. Cynthia. Um, I'm told that Jim's stress test is not anything serious. So Jim's stress test, okay. Jim's stress test didn't find anything serious, so that's good news. Anyone else in the quiet? Sure. Pray for Holly not with having spinal fusion surgery this week. She's had back fist. She's having all kinds of problems along with that. All right, so Holly, who's having spinal surgery this week. Okay. Karen. Uh, for my cousin Nancy, who's going through cancer, she's having problems. For Mitzi, who is going through cancer, is having some problems. Others? Yes, Debbie. Okay, we will keep Bob in our prayers. How's Sandy doing? Okay. Anyone else? Nancy? Okay, so Jean, who's having problems with her blood pressure. All right. Let, it, let me pull up the words there, Dawn. Okay. Let us pray. Holy and wondrous God, we praise and honor you for creation, for the gift of life, and for your abiding love, which brings us closer to you, the source of all blessings. We thank you for revealing your will for us in the giving of the law and the preaching of the prophets. We thank you especially that in the fullness of time you sent Jesus, born to our sister Mary, to live in our midst, to teach us, to share our suffering, and to accept the pain of death at the hands of those from whom Jesus loved. 
We rejoiced that on the third day you raised Jesus Christ from the tomb to new life. We celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to gather your church by which your mission and ministry may be done in this community and in the world. And we thank you for the congregation in the ministry of Lenhurst United Church of Christ. With the faithful in every time and place, we praise you with joy for your holy name. Guide us as we look to the future and act as a beacon of hope in this community, in this city, and in the world. And we pray for our congregation as we discern together your future for this congregation. We are small in numbers, but large, Lord, in heart and in faith. We pray that you will help us determine how to build community and build up your congregation. Help us figure out how to grow spiritually and in discipleship. Help us to listen to the needs of your people in our community and serve our neighbors. Please remind us to ask what you are doing each day and how we can be part of your mission and your ministry. We will pray that as we are forgiven, we can more easily forgive others. And we thank you for Jesus who died for us that we may be forgiven and live life anew and abundantly each day. We pray for those who are celebrating a birthday or an anniversary this month. We pray for healing for Beverly and for Ron and for Terry. We pray that your loving and gracious arms will unfold and hold Janice and her family. We are thankful for the good news that Jim received. We pray for Holly and pray that you will unfold her in your healing arms. And Mitzi, we pray for Bob, continuing prayers for Sandy and for Jean. And we pray for the Congregation of Grace Emanuel UCC, who will install their new pastor today. Oh, gracious God, we pray. And we ask you to hear us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come today to the table of grace, for Jesus invites us and calls us by name. I don't think the Holy Spirit's going to come if we sound like we don't care. So take a moment to feel the joy of the invitation to this table, to Christ's table. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Oh, now the Holy Spirit might come. Come to the table of love, for whoever serves in love knows God. Come to the table of blessings, for Jesus is here to welcome us. We come to the communion table today seeking the presence of the living Christ in fellowship with our friends in Christ. Those who are gathered here, those who are gathered in the little boxes on Zoom, those across the nation and the world who will come for the sacrament of communion. 
<coughs> For we are all a part of the body of Christ. No matter where we are sitting, no matter where we are worshiping, we come together. And we come to hear the story of how Jesus Christ gathered in that upper room with his disciples. And they were sharing a meal together. And in the midst of that meal, Jesus takes just ordinary bread, but he does something that becomes extraordinary, something that becomes special, something that becomes a sacrament. At that table, he takes the bread and he blesses it and he breaks it. And he says, this is my body that is shared for you. My body that is broken for you. Take and eat. And every time you eat of this bread, you do it in remembrance of me. In the same way, in the midst of that meal, Jesus took his cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. The cup of my blood that is shared for you. Take and drink. And when you drink of this cup, you do it in remembrance of me. So we're in many different places, yet we are one in the body of Jesus Christ. So no matter where you are sitting, each of our tables are sacred. So if you're at home, I invite you to put your hands over your table. If you're here in the sanctuary, kind of lift your hands, point them towards this common table, and let us pray together. God of bread and wine and all things sacred, your people come to you today from many different places but in one body. Please bless these tables and our time together as we share in the sacrament of communion. In the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us bless our communion elements together. So put your hands over your bread and your cup or your cracker or your cookie, whatever you're using today. And let us pray together. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this bread and bless this cup. And bless all of us in our eating and drinking at this table. That our eyes may be opened. And we may recognize the risen Christ in our midst and in each other. Amen. So I invite you to take your bread to eat. And as you eat, feel and know that Jesus Christ loves you. And take your cup, the cup of the new covenant, and drink, surrounded by the blessings of God's Holy Spirit. That sound of the opening of all those little cups is a new sound during our communion time. Let us pray. God of grace, we give you thanks that you have renewed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ in fellowship with our faith community. Please strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, And send us forth in courage and in hope. Amen.
We are invited to respond to God's forgiveness with grace and thanksgiving and praise. As we have been blessed, so we share from our bounty. May our offering express compassion and kindness within our faith community and in our outreach and care to the people in our community and the world. Thank you for your continuing support of our mission and ministry. And let us pray. Holy and gracious God, please bless our offering that we return to you. Multiply and use them to bring the good news and the living presence of Jesus Christ to this community and the world. Amen. So what do we do now? You are a beloved child of God, forgiven by Jesus. What do you need God to forgive you for this week? And who do you need to forgive or to be forgiven from? Show compassion and kindness to someone this week. So I have several announcements to share. Thank you to everyone who contributed gift cards and monetary donations to First Christian DOC. This week on Thursday, I sent a check for $2,625 and $210 worth of gift cards to that congregation to share with the people in that community around Mayfield, Kentucky. Thank you. Your generosity overwhelms me so very often. We have two Lenten outreach projects this season. We have food donations for South Louisville Community Ministries. Right now they are very low on canned soup and canned and jar spaghetti sauce, pasta sauce. So if those are things you can pick up this week, that would be wonderful. Yes, Karen. He also mentioned you need canned fruits. Canned fruits they need this week as well. So we would appreciate it if you're at the grocery store, if you could pick up any of those things. Jim Mayer is going to count our donations every week before I bring them to South Louisville, and we'll just keep a running tally of what our donations are. And then also we are all accepting donations for Care Africa. And Kathy talked a little bit about them last week. The picture up on the screen is the picture that's on the calendar that Kathy left for us to see of the students and the teachers at the school. Our donations are for their school feeding program so these students don't have to go to school hungry. There, are, there will be an in-person and a Zoom Wednesday evening services during Lent at 6.30 here. You can get on with the Zoom link that Sarah will be sending out or be here in the sanctuary. Our theme for our Lenten services in the evenings is, this is us, or is this us? Sharon Crosby and I will be leading these services together. Thank you, sir. In addition, Lyndhurst and Bethany UCC are having a time of devotions and journaling on Wednesday afternoons at 12 noon, we will be using the book Writing to God. So I invite you to join us for those. And Terry has asked me to record those as well. And remember, what is next week? So tell me again, what do I do with my clock? Is it, do I lose or gain sleep? Spring forward. Spring forward, so I'm losing an hour's sleep. I did an extra hour. Just go to bed, what? Go to bed earlier. Okay, put my clocks ahead. Okay, so so try not to be. Is that means you'd be an hour early for church and Sunday school? That's okay. You can come early. I don't want you to miss it. But sure, come early next week. That's the other way around. We'd be late. Yeah. Oh, don't be late for church next week. Change your clocks. I don't know why this confuses me. It happens twice a year. For 57 years, I haven't got it right yet. Okay. Um, actually, 
actually, the joy is my phone will change itself and wake me up. But thank you. Yes. All right. Oh, one more announcement from Nancy. Um, she's inviting, I guess, the women of the church to attend women, Church Women United annual assembly on Saturday, April 9th at 1030, with lunch served at 11 at the Hotel Louisville. The speaker is the Reverend Savosky Bray Pope, who is actually a DOC pastor in Louisville. Um, she's going to be speaking on a journey into Morocco. The tickets are $18. Let Nancy know if you'd like to come and join us for that. I'll be there giving the invocation for that luncheon. Okay. May the blessings of God Almighty, Creator Christ and Holy Spirit, be with you this day and into the coming week. Go in peace. Go be a light of hope. Go and serve in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So the peace of Christ be with you. Peace be in our world. Peace with us all.